Erev Tov, Chavrim. I'm Stephen Bernoun. You're watching Israeli News Live. Our good friend Lorenzo over here had already happened, putting out an article today uh, and sent this over to us there. What is the need for the U.S. to develop another big military base when ISIS is facing near total defeat in Syria? Uh, and what you're seeing here on your screen here uh, is actually yet another military base being developed there inside of Syria. Uh, we even got a runway right here. No doubt that runway there is being developed for uh, the drones, uh, the, the drones that are very capable of carrying bombs, etc., uh, by the U.S. government inside of Syria. And of course, that question does arise again. It's been in many Russian media outlets as well. We've been looking up some of the Russian language, uh, seeing exactly what it said, using Google Translate to be able to translate some of these articles for you here. This one here, experts, U.S. decision to stay in Syria will lead to new conflicts. Uh, this is exactly no doubt what's going to happen. And of course, uh, Maria Zakharova, the Russian foreign minister spokes foreign minister, excuse me, foreign ministry's spokesperson for the Russian government there, uh, also weighed in on this, saying that the uh, the uh, this position is very strange because we have repeatedly heard from the U.S. officials at all levels and all administrations that the United States is in Syria with only one goal to fight terrorism. Americans have not been invited to Syria uh, from the very beginning and now they can be asked for a way out, not only by strengthening the legitimate government headed by Bashar Assad, namely Russia's experience by the Pentagon generals. Raymond Thomas, Chief of, Chief of the U.S. Defense Ministry, Special Forces uh, Directorate, here's a puzzle. We are operating in a sovereign state of Syria. The Russians are their stronghold, and the day is not far off when they will say, why are you, uh, the U.S., uh, still in Syria? If the Russians play this card, then when we want to stay, we can, uh, excuse me, they'll play this card, then when we want to stay, we cannot do it. So, uh, very troubling situation right now with the U.S. talking about continuing to stay inside of Syria only for the, for the sake of a continued conflict. And again, it goes right back down to the, 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 the three-part series we put out the other day about Israel, uh, the house of Judah, the house of, uh, uh, excuse me, the uh, Manasseh, Ephraim, all fighting at one another, looking at the prophecy there of Isaiah 9. And I don't know how many of you guys really caught that part when I looked at the prophecy there in Hosea. But Hosea clearly identifies that the prophecy that I said that Laban stated about, if you take other wives other than my daughters unto yourself, God be a judge between me and you. Also speaking about uh, the, the fact that uh, the heap of stones that was put in Gilead, that neither one would cross over to do the other harm. Uh, Jacob would not cross over to do the Syrians harm. The Syrians would not cross over to do Jacob harm. And of course, that has been broken time and time again. And it's broken on both sides. I'm not just saying it's broken by Israel. It's broken on both sides, especially in modern times. But if you will notice, every time Syria has ever broken that covenant, uh, as far as historically that I can see biblically, it's always been because of the excuse me, the prophecy that has been uh, broken that indeed Israel took other wives other than his daughters, namely Ahab with Jezebel. That's when Israel came in over, excuse me, Syria came into Gilead there. That's when uh, Jehoshaphat and Ahab are talking about fighting together to drive the Syrians out. But Jehoshaphat not recognizing the very truth of the matter uh, that you know, the covenant had been broken by Laban, but Hosea clearly identifies Gilead as part of that prophecy there. Um, we'll go into that. You guys had three parts to go into that. If you have not seen those three parts, you need to back up and watch them all. I loaded part two first. I uh, apologize that just running into little issues here, uh, to, uh, getting everything processed here. But watch part one, part two, and part three because it is clearly a biblical um, biblical conflict that is happening there and now the side of this where it's Ephraim and Manasseh that will go at each other's throat that's where you find that in Isaiah chapter 9 uh, that's what we're going to see next here we're going to see Russia and the United States face off over there and eventually 
everything's going to turn against Judah. They're going to turn against the state of Israel. Uh, I know that sounds like far-fetched because the U.S. seems to be siding with Israel. But what if Trump is replaced? What if there's another president that comes into power? Well, we can't expect the best in the world then for, for Israel at that point there. Very troubling, very concerning indeed, if you ask me. Uh, moving on as well, another news there. Harari says he wants Lebanon to be neutral but won't let Hezbollah jeopardize regional security. Well, the... <laughs> the Prime Minister there has made it back into the country and uh, I think it's kind of interesting that uh, he suddenly changes his mind about resigning. It seemed like to me that man was under a lot of pressure when he was down in Saudi Arabia. Goes down there, suddenly can't leave, can't do anything, claims he's resigning. Well, I guess they got him to go back and say the right words at the right time, just the way it should be said, in order for him to stay in power without conflict. Well, the thing is, though, the conflict, though, is definitely coming. And this may be another reason why the U.S. is building a base in Syria, because Hezbollah is still considered a problem for the U.S. government. Remember, General Wesley Clark said all these nations they're going to take down. Lebanon was one of those nations. It's not so much because of the prime minister. They kind of got him on the right chain and he's obeying. Uh, and of course, you got to remember, this is Roman wars to start with. It's not just war of the United States. This is The U.S. is fighting the battles for Rome and what Rome wants to conquer. And of course, anything that's not Roman Catholic, they want to conquer. That's why Syria had to go down. Uh, this is why you see all this battling that's going on there in the Middle East. And, and of course, Lebanon, Hezbollah is in the way. So therefore, Lebanon has to be taken down so it can become a stronghold for, well, I don't know what, for the greater uh, Zion project there, the Rothschild project. I'm not talking about the Jewish people. I'm not talking about the Jews that have returned home to be part, uh, Israel being part of their homeland according to the prophecies that are written in the book of Hosea, book, book of Zechariah, and many other prophecies that promised that we would return to the homeland. Even Paul writing in Romans 11 said we would return here in this last day there, that we would be regathered again. I mean, we can't deny these scriptural facts that are laying there. But, when we look at what's going on on a political landscape and in a military landscape, very troubling indeed. All right, now moving on again, let's go into some other issues here. And actually, before I hit this video, the video is more just kind of a, um, it's actually kind of the after the fact. I'll go into that in just a moment here. China's nuclear bombers on 24-7 combat alert amid fears of war in the Pacific. Now, this is actually being reported by the Daily Star. And I know the Daily Star is, is more of a tabloid type of uh, newspaper coming out of the UK. But uh, if you do a little bit of research about the Daily Star, they're rated at the very bottom as far as uh, tabloid style that they do are claim to have had some facts in there. Uh, so I did a little bit of uh, fact checking on this article here and I can see where they're coming from on this because there has been, as it says here, China has placed its nuclear bombers on a 24-7 alert amid growing tensions with U.S. and North Korea, according to reports. Uh, but it's more so uh, because Beijing has sold war, war uh, not that there, but let me get back here. Uh, it is from the... Um, Xi'an H6Ks, which can be armed with nuclear bombers, flew over the region on Thursday as the superpower continues to clash with the U.S. Uh, China's military boasted the flyover showed they could breach the so-called First Island Chain. This is the frontier Chinese commands believe they need to breach to successfully wage war against the U.S. U.S. warships, the aircraft carriers, USS Ronald Reagan, USS Nimitz, USS Theodore Roosevelt are currently on exercise in the region there. And as we all know about this already, North Korea, excuse me, South Korea and the U.S. are once again engaging in drills with three uh, incredibly powered uh, nuclear, or one of them being a nuclear-powered aircraft carriers, but major uh, U.S. aircraft carriers in the region. Uh, they have Japan on their side, and they're just waiting for North Korea to flinch the wrong way to have any reason to justify a war. But uh, supposedly, China is on high alert, and if they're on high alert, they're planning on possibly engaging the U.S. And I can kind of see where this also may be true in the fact that uh, China, Russia, and I believe it's Iran are talking about trading in Chinese yuan for oil. 
uh, that is only going to put pressure on the U.S. dollar and even a possible collapse of the U.S. dollar. Now, the video I was kind of clicking on just a little bit ago here, it doesn't actually show the images, uh, but it is kind of interesting here. And uh, I will just kind of share with you what, what is being spoken about in this video right here. Uh, this is uh, China's nuclear-powered bombers that they have made long distance bombers they're they're bombers that they're making they're comparing them to anything that the u.s or the most strategic planes that the u.s happens to have and nothing is comparis compared to this this nuclear bomber uh, according to the chinese officials is 100 years more advanced than anything russia or the u.s can uh, has uh, it would be like having a nuclear powered submarine or a nuclear powered ship the bomber is, able, is capable of staying in the air. Uh, in, in some cases, uh, we have reports up to three months. This particular article right here in Chinese actually talking about being up in the air for up to a year. And the number of nuclear bombs that it can carry and its payload is unbelievable, unfathomable how much firepower this particular uh, nuclear powered. Again, it's a nuclear powered bomber we're talking about in the air flying above the united states and even able to deploy from uh from outside of our own atmosphere here uh being a star wars type of plane we, we, this kind of makes you think ufo technology uh, maybe this is how the ufos are actually powered remember how so many times we talk about ufos and there being radiation and stuff like that around where they land at I think of that oftentimes when I think of this, uh, that the Chinese have developed this technology. And this is, this is not something new. The Chinese have been talking about this now. Uh, they kind of let this out a little bit, almost about a close, back of the first part of the year, they first began to talk about this nuclear-powered bomber that they have uh, made and what its capabilities are, but now they're really starting to talk about they're ready to put this into action. Uh, no doubt. Another reason why the U.S. is a bit concerned with what Chinese are doing and the technology that they have, and we may see a war almost inevitable. Those of you guys, I'm sure you've already heard by now about what happened over in the Sinai Peninsula, ISIS attacking, uh, not only was it a mosque, I've also got reports when I talked to an Egyptian uh, friend uh, today myself, he said there was a church attacked as well. Some 150 people have been killed scores were injured as a result of that and I could not help but think about that secret flight we talked about the other day of Russia uh, sending a military plane from Moscow down to Egypt. Is it a possibility that Egypt is, is maybe working with Moscow about trying to come in and help root out the ISIS militants out of the Sinai Peninsula as well? That may very much well be in the works. We'll just have to wait to see how that goes, which direction that actually goes in. Uh, Mexico revokes Monsanto permit to make GMO soil soy excuse me soy I am so happy to hear that that Monsanto is getting knocked in the knees again uh, they're getting knocked in the knees from Europe of course Europe has voted to keep Monsanto for five more years as far as their gly glyphosate uh, weed killer uh, that they're using that is causing cancer according to scientific uh, research that's been done there in Europe uh, but the, the debate is being taken up more and more by by governments around the globe and it's slowing Monsanto's ability to move forward and that is so much happy to see that type of reaction there. One other bit of news there before we close, as I said, so glad to see Monsanto kind of get <laughs> knocked down a notch uh, again there by the Mexican government there. Uh, but one other bit of news I wanted to share with you today. This was something that we captured ourselves here in Orlando, Seminole County. Uh, as you can see in behind you here, Sheriff's Humvee, and we're talking about a military style Humvee. Uh, with Seminole County Sheriff Star on there, Sheriff's logo on the side of it, no blue lights, but again, it just kind of shows you the way the United States is going. The uh, police here becoming more of a military style, or at least getting ready for that. Uh, I have no idea the, the truth behind the Seminole County and, uh, you know, as far as using military equipment, is it the only Humvee they have? Uh, is it one of many? Are they 
preparing for some type of uh, future conflict that, that may go on in the United States. I don't know as far as that, how that goes. I just happened to be driving down the road earlier today, saw this Humvee, and I had to get a picture of that, especially with it being sheriff's logos on there from Seminole County, Florida. I'm Stephen Benoon. If our broadcast is a blessing to you, please support the work we're doing here. Your support is greatly needed. Uh, and also uh, one other bit of news to let you know as well. Next week, we have to go back to Europe. Uh, there's, we have the ability to do testing for my wife uh, medically that is far cheaper in Europe because uh, we're insured in Europe under our medical plans there. Uh, which we don't have in the U.S. So there are some tests there that we could get done that we could not get done here. Uh, but of course, if something else gets worse in the near future, uh, my wife said she would actually rather be treated in the U.S. versus over in Europe there. So we do need your help and your continued prayers for my wife there and your continued uh, support in this endeavor. Uh, besides the broadcast we do, if, you, if it's a blessing to you and you want to support the broadcast, please do it. Visit our website, IsraeliNewsLive.org. If you have trouble there, uh, you can give right here on our PayPal where you can see it there on the uh, YouTube channel there. And if you just need to do it it's directly by email, my wife's email, uh, which I'll post in the link below there for you, will, will take you directly to her PayPal link there. We also have a GoFundMe uh, set up on our Facebook, Israeli News Live, so you can check that out as well. Uh, we'll repost that up there. There's been so many of you have given, and, and I have not had a chance to thank each one of you individually. Uh, about half the people we have, but I will get caught up on that. Uh, Yana's treatment has been nonstop, week after week, uh, still having ups and downs. So good days, bad days here recently. There have been some pretty bad ones. So we ask for your continued prayer for her. And thank you again for helping in your kindness and making sure that we can get her treated here in the U.S. I'm Stephen Benoon with Israeli News Live, Erev Tov.